I'll be explaining how I design a custom enclosure for my 18 inch sub. And in my next video, I'll be converting my sealed sub into a ported sub. So let's get to the video. So the first step of designing an enclosure is you wanna make sure that you have your sub driver picked out because we'll be needing the TS parameters for that sub driver. So once you have your sub driver picked out, you wanna go ahead and look up that sub driver and look up the TS parameters for that sub driver. And you should see a whole list of a bunch of different things. You don't have to know what each of these mean as the only reason you need these TS parameters is so you can import them in WinISD. So then you wanna go ahead and install WinISD. I'll have a link down below in the description so you guys can download that. And once you guys have WinISD downloaded, it should look like this. And then you wanna go ahead to the top left and then you wanna click this icon right here. And then you wanna press add new and then you can input the brand and the model of your sub driver. And now you wanna click parameters and then you wanna find each and every parameter that is listed for that specific sub driver. WinISD will automatically fill in any parameters that you don't have for that sub driver. So if you are missing a few, then you shouldn't have to worry. And once you have all your TS parameters inputted, you wanna go ahead and click save. So now what you wanna do is you wanna click that same icon that we clicked on before. And then you wanna go ahead and find the brand of your driver. And then you should see the driver name that you saved. And then you wanna go ahead and click on that. And if when ISD says that the driver failed the integrity check, then what I did to fix that is I messed around with the TS parameters and I let when ISD automatically set some of the TS parameters and that fixed it for me. And if you don't have any issues or once you have that fixed and then you can pick how many drivers you're using. Now you can go ahead and click next and now you can pick if you're using a sealed box, a vented box or a band pass enclosure. And for the alignment, I usually just go ahead and pick this and now you can click next and now you can set your project name and then you'll see this line on this frequency graph. And then you wanna go ahead and click box and now you can play around with the enclosure size and also the tuning. And you can try to make this frequency graph as close as you can for your specific needs. So if you want your sub to go low, then you could try tuning lower. Or if you wanna design a box for SPL, then you could tune a little bit higher. And if you're also limited on space, then you could see how your subwoofer is going to perform with a specific box size. It's gonna be different for every sub driver. So you can go ahead and play around with this until you find a frequency response that you're happy with. And then if you look at the top of a one ISD, and if I click transfer function magnitude and go to cone excursion, we can actually see how much excursion the driver will have in that specific enclosure. But if that line is all the way at the bottom, then you wanna go ahead to the bottom left and click signal. And then for how much RMS power your sub driver can handle, you wanna input that in the system input power. And that red line basically means that your subwoofer is exceeding its mechanical limits. So you wanna try to stay under that, at least for the main frequencies that you actually wanna be listening to. But it is going to be different just depending on your driver and also how you design your box. And if you go to the bottom left and click on vents, if you're doing a band pass enclosure or a vented enclosure, then you can design your port and see how long it actually needs to be. And you can also check your port resonance so you can see if that's gonna be a problem or not. And if you click cone excursion, we can go down to rear port air velocity and we can actually see how much port noise your port is going to have. And for a good sound quality sub, I'd recommend staying below 20 or even 15. If you're playing way below your tuning frequency, then you could encounter some port noise, but you should have your subsonic set before that happens anyways. When ISD also has a ton of other options, so you can see your group delay, you can also see the impedance, and just a ton of other things. And once you have this, now you've designed your own subwoofer enclosure. I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, or if you just enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you smash that like button. I appreciate y'all for watching. Hopefully y'all learned something new today, and I'll see y'all in the next video.